Elizabeth McDonald, web reporter for GC42. And with me tonight, Jeff Cook, my friend and colleague, writer and reporter in the GC42 newsroom. Here we are, the last day, the final hours. Of the finally the final hours. Finally the final hours. And without question, the business today was all about the comprehensive review. And after two and a half years of consultations across the country, proposals upon proposals upon proposals, five days of the commissioners discussing with one another, building consensus, tonight an omnibus bill comes in response to the comprehensive review. Six highlights, much, much more, but let's just share the six highlights. Commissioners have decided that 10% of the mission and service contributions will go to funding new ministries and transformed ministries. Funding will continue and conversation will continue in support of Aboriginal ministries. The decision's been made to move from four courts to three councils. Three councils. There'll be a denominational, a regional, and communities of faith. Commissioner said yes to that change, but no to the proposed College of Ministers, an arm-length group that would do accreditation, oversight, and discipline of ministers. Instead, they opted for... A, uh, something they're calling an Office of Vocation that will be located at the denominational level, probably will consist both of staff and elected representatives, though. They've given a green light to do a study about an association of ministers. And they've, uh, they've approved some principles for a new funding model, and significantly the decision was made that communities of faith will be assessed to support the administrative and governance costs. Ministry and mission will continue to be supported by the MNS fund, but communities of faith will be assessed by the denomination, but... But there is the option for the regional council to also assess if they need to. So... What stood out for you as we went through this, the, all of these different proposals? One of the things that really stood out for me was right at the end, when it came to move the omnibus motion, Kathy Hamilton moved it. Uh, Kathy chaired the Comprehensive Review Group that has been meeting for a couple of years to prepare this. She asked the members of the Comprehensive Review to stand with her asked the members of the sessional committee who received their report and then reworked it for recommendations to also stand. It was a sign that they recognized that while this document is not the document they presented, it now belongs to the general counsel. And it, this council did its work. It was very moving, very moving to see the members of the Comprehensive Review Task Group, to see the members of the sessional committee, and the sense of this council, although there were differences of opinion, and not everyone uh, saw the proposals in the same way, a sense of really, it, by the end, coming together. This was the work of this general counsel. It was exhausting, I think, for everyone, and watching it, it's a very almost tedious process of going through line by line at times to work it, but I think Gary Patterson chairing the meeting did an extremely good job of saying we need to get this right and giving people a chance to speak and check things as they came up and wanting to make sure that they had this the best they could to present. Now this isn't, uh, these decisions aren't entirely final because several of the proposals that have been approved, several of the changes that are being made, will need to be tested by the wider church. Right, they have issued remits for some of them, which means that there'll be about two years in which the church will be studying these, then a remit, and the results of that remit will come to the next general council to be implemented by that general council. We're going to be talking about the comprehensive review for a long, long time to come as we live into it. And hard as it is to believe, that was not the only business conducted today. There were some other important decisions that were made. Council also approved a, a proposal for what's called one order of ministry. Um, which was discussed the other day, looked as if they were not going to move to approve it, but they did. Uh, it would create one order of ministry um, out of what currently are um, ordained, those commissioned to diagonal ministry and designated lay ministers, and it will be one group under a term order of ministry. And that's another proposal that is going to have to be tested across the and church. And will also require study. We will be a studying church for a couple of years. 
There was another very interesting debate around a proposal to move us out from under the federal act of parliament that created the United Church of Canada in 1924, a very strong recommendation that we place ourselves under the not-for-profit corporations act. Vigorous debate. In the end, a majority of the commissioners approved it, but because this needed a two-thirds vote, and only 59% were in favor, uh, in the end, that, that failed, and so as of today, and tomorrow, we will continue to be under that Act of 1924. But very interesting discussion, as you say, and I think it came down to a lot of people saying, why are we doing this? And even though, the slight, as you say, a slight majority said, let's do it, it's not a big enough majority in this case. So. There is so much detail about uh, the decisions made today. And so if you want to find out more about the action the 42nd General Council has taken on the comprehensive review, if you want to find out more about the order of ministry, if you want to find out more about everything that's been happening here at the 42nd General Council, go to gc42.ca.